are headed to Silver City. It's an abandoned mining town. We are on a dirt road. Um, there is no gas station probably within two hours. Hey y'all, I'm Carolina Tony. Today we are in Silver City, Idaho. This is a old mining town. It is literally one hour drive on probably one of the roughest dirt roads you can imagine to get back here. Most people come in on side-by-sides and four-wheelers and uh, we are here and I really don't know what to expect. So we're gonna look around and see just what is in Silver City. As you can see, this is how most people gain entrance to Silver City. And I'm gonna guess this is probably Main Street. Walk around and look, these old buildings. No gas up here, no cell service. Remnants of old mining equipment. This was apparently something that used to be here that burned down. Or rotted down, I don't know. That looks like the the entrance to a mine. There are people that live up in here. streets are lined out. I really don't know what to say. This is definitely different. There's the Silver City Meat Market, 1867. Places look very old very run down well here's a little creek running through the lower portion of Silver City I bet there has been a lot of folks in this creek panning for gold Not what I expected. All those houses up in there, this 
I'm assume was a church or maybe a school. I was right. 1892, Idaho Standard School. Let's see if we can look in the window. We have right now in 1925. So, so your family's been here like? My husband's family, yeah. Your husband's family's been well, here. My, my father-in-law and his sister both went to school here. Oh, really? So. And that's that's the church. Yeah, and it, it's it's getting a new facelift, getting all new siding on it. The winters are really hard on stuff up here. Yeah. Really hard. So, is it still a functioning church? Yes. We have wow. mass about five times a year, four or five times a year. Uh-huh. So this was primarily a mining town? Yes, definitely. And at one point, um, between here and the surrounding little towns around, uh -huh. there was like 4,000 people. 4,000 people in the in the area. Yes. And this was built in 98. Uh-huh. Or 19. Yeah. 19. 18. 18. Yes. Okay, the 1898. Yeah. Our house, at, there's, you can, we were on the national and the state and the county historical registers. Uh-huh. If you want to change the color of paint on a building, it has to be okayed by all of those three entities. Wow, even here. Oh, yeah. Because we're on the historical registers. So wow. Yeah, it's, uh, this little church on the hill it's amazing there's no steps to get up to it you have to climb the mountain to go to church so the late 1890s is when this church was built and it's still a functioning church it's a catholic church This is a lot of buildings here in Silver City are on the National Register of Historic Places. Lady told me that they can't even change the paint color unless they get approval. There's the old school. Let's look in the window of the church, see what we can see. So this this was a planing mill. Yeah. Where right. they yeah they planed lumber they, or logs down into in lumber. Yeah. So but it didn't last long because you know in the spring until probably Fourth of July there's pretty good water flow and then after that the mm -hmm. water is no. Uh huh. So. So it actually relied on water power to uh, plane the logs and all. I think so. Anyway, the, um, what is it? What is it now? The Masonic Hall. Really, that's the and Masonic Lodge. Yeah, and now it's a private, private home or something. Right. So originally, this was a planing mill, and the water in the stream went right up under there. But certain times of the year, there was a good water flow, but afterward the uh, water would be kind of like it is now and kind of useless. Look at this tree. Someone's put a tree house in it. Like a lot of small towns, there is a memorial park downtown to come sit and reflect. Here in Silver City, Idaho, they get four to six feet of snow during the winters. And there has been no electricity here since the 1940s. Population during the summer around 12. And the boom time during the gold and silver mining, 2,500. They have had telephones since the 1880s. And how they rely on electricity here now is solar power. And of course, we're 6,200 feet up in the mountains. There were over 250 working mines here in Silver City and the surrounding areas during the boom day. This hotel was established in 1863 in Ruby City, up upstream from here. The North Wing moved to South Carolina in 1866. Go figure that. Yeah, 
Well, look, there's a restaurant here in Silver City at the Silver City Idaho Hotel. We're gonna go in and have some lunch. This is where you check into the yeah. hotel. Yeah, that's a good thing. Exactly. <laughs> some of the artifacts of the days gone by. So there's no electricity here in town. Most people rely on solar or other means. You see on the top of that cabin there is solar. So the church is on the hill over there and in the creek right in front of us under the road. But uh, here's the path to the cemetery. I can't begin to describe to you how difficult it was to, to get into this town. You really need a high clearance vehicle, all wheel drive, side by side, because this is very treacherous and it's a long ways. And you need a full tank of gas when you come here because there's no gas once you get up here. There's no gas on the way. But I want to utilize every bit of the time that I have here. So I'm taking a hike right now to the uh, cemetery. And you just never know what's over the hill, but during the day, there was this was a bustling place. Lots of uh, miners and their families here. You can see some of the buildings here in the town. You can hear the water running through the little creek. Hear it? Lady said it was less than half a mile. Eighteen thirty one died, eighteen seventy five. Chris Studer, born 1839 in Switzerland, killed by Indians June the 8th, 1878, South Mountain, Idaho. This little bit here is paved, but the majority of it is single lane dirt road has limited service, no gas, no repair service, water or medical services. The road to Silver City and, and in the town cannot accommodate large campers, RVs, no semi-trucks. It's dry camping only. And I just came back from there so I can attest it is a very long winding road. And when you get up there, wow, are you gonna be surprised. This is going to be the end of our video, the end of our visit to Silver City, Idaho. Standing on the hill with the cemetery behind me, it was the end of many of the people that lived here, those brave pioneers that came west in search of riches, in search of a better way for their families. Definitely a tough breed of people. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed our visit here. If you did, be sure to give us a big old thumbs up. Be sure to share this video with your family and friends. But until next time, y'all have a good day.